G'day, I'm Tim Thompson. Today's video is a review of some of the best five wire spinners on the market today. I'm gonna to go through the features and benefits of each one, and I'm gonna describe their various uses. I reckon if you watch this video through to the end, you might even decide you need a couple of these because for such a supposedly simple device, the range of capacities of these different spinners is enormous. Don't forget, if you like this video, hit the subscribe button, give it a thumbs up. The first of the spinners that we're comparing today is the simple and cheap galvanized spinner. This one in particular, I've had for about 20 years. It was the cheapest thing in the shop. Um, and it's done most of my fences. These are not designed to be mounted into a vehicle, although those of you who've seen my videos might notice that I might not always follow manufacturer's guidelines. There's a good reason for that. If wire becomes tangled or coiled on one of these spinners, it can jam and the spinner can become a projectile at the back of your vehicle. So if you are gonna use them outside of manufacturer's specs, be careful. These spinners are designed to be placed on the ground and have wire run out from them by hand. The design of these sorts of spinners is universally simple. There is a stand with a shaft coming up through the center. Supported by that shaft are two components. You have your top brace that keeps the coil of wire in place and then you have your bottom support which has bars pointing up to keep the inside of your coil located centrally. With this sort of spinner, there is no overrun protection. There is a simple brake, which is a piece of pipe that this base has to skip past every time it goes through. If you pull on this really fast and then you just suddenly stop, there is a chance that the coil will continue to spin for a few turns and that the sixth or seventh coil in on your pack will actually slip out over the base and cause a jam. So be careful when you're using these spinners that you start and finish your run very, very slowly. The advantage with buying this sort of spinner is that it's as cheap as dirt and it's as strong as you can get. You can't break this with an ax. It's only good for running out plain wire the brake doesn't particularly work that well and there's no overspool protection. So the simple Norton Gates spinner comes in at a respectable 9.6 kilos. That's just pure water pipe welded together with a couple of ends knocked on. The next spinner that we have in the lineup is the White's adjustable spinner. Now this is their baseline model and the adjustable arms mean that you can change the internal radius of this spinner to suit any size coil pack. Now you might think, why do I need to do that? All wire has the same internal diameter, and that's true. But if you're like me, and you've ever tried to run out irrigation line, you'll find that it doesn't quite fit your spinner, and you have to play all sorts of silly games to try and get it to fit. With this spinner here, all you have to do is in adjust the internal dimensions, and your pipe pack fits perfectly. This is a truly ad adaptable spinner. The other advantage that you get with this sort of spinner is that you can use it to wind wire up. So if you're taking wire off a fence, you can wind it as tight as you like. And then when it comes to the end, you simply release the adjustment bars and the wire coil pops neatly and easily off the spinner to be used again. So if you like recycling wire and you take down fences from time to time, one of these little devices is a must have in my book. Now there are a couple of modifications I'd make to this spinner to make it even easier to use. The first thing is I remove the standard bolts that come with it and I replace them with an eight millimeter bolt with a T-handle welded across the top. Much easier to use than the bent device they give you from stock. The second thing I do is I replace these little nuts here that hold on their brake with a lock nut because these do rattle loose very, very quickly. In fact, the first day I used this spinner, one of them nearly fell off. So replace those with a lock nut and you'll never touch them again. Otherwise, this is a brilliant little spinner. Let's see how much it weighs. Let's see if it's truly portable. And the adjustable arm model from White's weighs in at just on 10 kilos, making this a very portable spinner indeed. Next up, we've got the White's contractor model. Now this particular wire spinner has a few extra features. First off, 
you've got a spring brake on the top that's really just a friction brake that compresses your coil onto the base plate and slows the spin down. Having that adjustable can be really useful as you go down in the amount of wire you have left in your coil and it becomes lighter. That'll stop overspin and make this much easier to control. The next feature of this particular spinner is actually quite ingenious. If you've ever tried to run out barbed wire, you know as soon as it touches the ground, the barbs start digging in, picking up trash, and it makes it just about impossible to pull the barbed wire off a fixed spinner. This spinner becomes a barbed wire trolley. Let's go through the simple process to turn it into a mobile barbed wire dispenser. First, take the top brake bar off the spinner. Take the spring off. Then you're going to want to reverse both of your two wire wheels. Put them on back to front. Put your barbed wire pack on between the two reversed wheels. Then replace your top spring and your top bar. You've now got a barbed wire dispensing trolley. This setup allows you to safely and easily run out your barbed wire along the ground, towing this thing behind you like a simple trolley. So if you're gonna run out a lot of barbed wire on your property, and you don't wanna to go to the expense of buying a specialized barbed wire spindle, then this little spinner might be the answer that you were looking for. Now let's see how much she weighs and get on with the next spinner. The contractor model from White's weighs in at nearly 18 kilos, so nearly double the weight of their small model, but you are getting the brake, the unspooling roll, and the adaptability that make this a true barbed wire spinner. The next spinner we're looking at today is a true contractor grade spinner. This is made by Fenceline Solutions and wholly manufactured in Australia, in Bright in Victoria. This spinner has a solid base with holes pre-drilled ready to mount to your vehicle. It's designed to be a mounted solution for running out wire. This spinner is also made of spring steel. That makes it very light and very strong in construction. And the strength is important if you're getting a number of different people to use your spinner because we all know how well people look after your equipment. Being a professional spinner, this is incredibly easy to load. All you have to do is take off the front guide and the wire slots in the cradle like a cassette. There's no top and bottom to replace. It's that simple, that quick, and you're ready to go. Looking at the central hub of this spinner, it's made of really, really solid steel. And that glides on top of a simple acrylic bearing. The manufacturer recommends lubricating it with Lanox, white lithium grease, something like that. You can lubricate this spinner as much as you like. Peter from Fenceline tells me he's been manufacturing these spinners for over six years and he's never had one returned by a contractor with a worn out bearing. The good thing about this is they're simple, easy to maintain, don't require frequent lubrication and because there's no moving bearings, there's no moving parts to wear out. Now the ingenious thing about this spinner is that the guide also acts as the brake. You'll see that we have two ceramic insulators on a pivoting guide. That pivot's really, really important. When you get to the end of the run and you stop pulling out the wire, the coil pack expands. That forces the guide around and this throw of wire applies an automatic brake to the coil waiting for you to start pulling out again when it straightens up. So this simple design of the pivoting guide head acts not only to make the process of pulling wire from this spinner so silky smooth you barely notice you're unrolling wire, it also automatically applies a brake to the roll every time you stop. The fence line solution spinner comes in at just over 16 kilos and that keeps this spinner still in the realm of a portable spinner, even though it's contractor grade with bearings and attachment points for putting on vehicles so that you can run out wire from a vehicle. Last but certainly not least, we've got the big daddy of this bunch. This is the Walters Fencing Wire Spinner. This spinner has sealed bearings that don't require maintenance, and it does have 
a mechanical brake. So every time you stop spinning, the wire pack immediately stops and falls down onto the braking pad. This means there can be no overspin and no overrun whatsoever, with the coil pack falling down onto the brake disc every time you stop pulling. This spinner, weighing in at nearly 20 kilos, is designed really to be a professional contractor spinner that is permanently mounted to vehicles. This is not the sort of spinner that you want to be walking around the paddocks with every day under your arm. However, if you're a contractor that has this mounted to a machine, you're doing kilometres of fence a day. And the ease and ability of simply loading your wire roll as a cassette just like that and continuing on going is probably why you're going to spend the extra dollars on this. Not only that, but these can easily be stacked either by adding some simple steel pipe or by buying a purpose-built stacker from Walters Fencing that can be attached to the mast of your tractor or to your truck or tray of your ute. The feeder on this spinner also has a roller bearing, so it makes it silky smooth when you're pulling the wire out. The angled internal arms of this spinner feed straight to the brake and as soon as you start pulling on the wire, the brake automatically undoes and pulling the wire out of this spinner combined with the roller bearing on the feed couldn't be easier or simpler in operation. Just like the other contractor spinner that we reviewed, pulling wire out of this spinner is child's play and it's silky smooth. When you've been using cheap spinners most of your career and you step up to something like this, you see why contractors who are running wire out every day spend the extra money. With one finger, I can pull the wire through the wire feed, past the roller bearing, and as soon as I start pulling on the wire, the angled internal arms feed the wire up to the brake, release it, and the wire feeds through silky smooth and as easy as you can imagine. As soon as you stop pulling on the wire, it falls out of the brake and it won't move. The fence line solutions and the Walters fencing supplies wire spinners are both made to be used at much higher speed and much more freely than the cheaper options for the home farmer. These guys really are the business if you're a contractor. You wouldn't muck around with cheaper spinners. They're not designed for rolling wire up. They're not designed for running out barbed wire. They are specialised spinners that make running plain wire out along your fence lines super simple, super easy and super fast. Now I reckon it's time we give these professional standard spinners a real run for their money. Anyone who's ever run out wire before knows that an end of a roll is really challenging. Especially when oops, you drop it and tangle it. Let's see how they go. This roll of wire is second hand. It's a bit tangled. It's a bit of a mess. It's a bit corroded. It's not good wire to run through a spinner. And we're going to try and run these guys out way too fast. We're going to see how these perform with a really bad operator so that you, being the best operator in the world, will have unlimited success with these machines. failed there was the camera um, this guy handled that test perfectly there was I must say a small amount of overrun before the feeder kicked out at the angle and stopped the whole process so there was a little bit of overrun and that comes from not having a mechanical brake on this device however every time that wire I'm not sure you saw it but every time that wire tried to kink this feeder just threw it back down and made it behave itself it was like it was keeping it in its place this is a sensational piece of kit and it doesn't weigh very much more than the cheap spinners that are designed just to be carried around the yard and yet it will bolt to your machinery and work. This spinner is golden. Next up is the Beast from Walters and I figured, hey, why not throw a few things at it and see if that cage works? And it 
did. Now I went flat out then, way too fast, much faster than anyone would ever recommend, with a second hand roll that was all coiled up and all caught up and trying to jam, and this damn thing just wouldn't let it jam. This is a good quality spinner. If it can operate at that speed with this bad a quality roll of wire, I'd be amazed what it can do with a new roll of wire at a careful, considered speed. So there you go, I ran out secondhand twisted wire like a nutcase from both the professional models and not once did they stumble. As you saw, the wire tried to jam and tried to jam and tried to jam. The combination of really good design, smooth operation and the feeders just kept that process running smoothly no matter how fast I went in the ute. So the verdict, which one goes home in the ute? Well I'm really lucky, I get to keep all five. But for you guys at the shop trying to make that decision, you've got the very budget priced galvanized wire spinner. That's really handy. If you're gonna treat it like rubbish, leave it out beside the tractor shed in the rain for years at a time and give it to people that don't respect your equipment. But it's limited flexibility and it's limited capacity to do other jobs restricts it really to just a basic wire spinner. For only a few dollars more and only a few dollars more, you have the incredibly customizable, adjustable spinner from White's, this spinner is going to allow you not only to roll wire out, it's going to allow you to roll out barbed wire, and it's also going to allow you to do irrigation and roll up wire. So this little spinner here, even if you buy one of the more expensive ones, I reckon should be part of your kit. Then we come up to the White's contractor model. For this one, I love the idea that you can turn this into a trolley to run out your barbed wire without it catching on the ground. I reckon that's a really good solution. I also like the fact that it's got a very basic brake and it's adjustable for its tension when you're pulling it out. None of the spinners on the ground are machine mountable. None of the manufacturers recommends putting them on the back of a tractor or a ute. For that, you're gonna need the professional gear. And you've got these two amazing spinners. Both of them have bearings. This one's got your acrylic bearing. This one's got your sealed bearings. This one has a braking system that relies on engineering. This one has a mechanical braking system that just does not falter and drops that load down the minute you start pulling. For my money, if you're after a low weight, highly flexible professional contracting spinner i would head towards the fence line solutions spinner it's just got that lighter weight that allows it to be carried around with you if you're one of the pros that just wants a machine mounted spinner and wants to be able to stack them this spinner is made for stacking it's so much easier to use than any of the others and the braking system is flawless so i hope that helps sorting out which spinner to buy and i reckon if i know any of you well there's going to be a few spinners written down on the christmas list this year not just one so guys i hope you've enjoyed this review as you can see there are amazing options available in terms of wire spinners and wire spinners ain't wire spinners they can do a whole range of things if this video was useful to you please hit the little subscribe button give it a thumbs up go and visit me on timthompson.ag and i have links to all of the supplies for these amazing products right there on my website you can have a chat to them yourselves thanks very much to all the manufacturers out there that are supporting the channel and getting involved in promoting Australian agriculture to the world it makes an enormous contribution to the quality of the videos that I can put out each week and I really appreciate the trust and the care that manufacturers are taking in connecting with their consumers if you've got any requests sometimes I can even help get on to me through my website in the meantime see you next week